This video is going to show you how to repair the jack on your truck camper and you can see how the jack was torn off the front right corner there. The culprit is that red hoop coming out of the ground by the right rear tire of my truck. And there is the torn out framing. So you cannot see that jack because it's down so low you can't see it from the driver's seat through the fender. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm tearing off the uh, weather sealing uh, uh, rubber stuff that I put on there after the accident. And uh, it's been on there for a couple of months here while I was trying to figure out how to make my repairs. And it kept everything dry, uh, my framing and everything inside the truck camper uh, stayed in good dry condition. Okay. So, um, I'm taking off the uh, side cover to the fridge. All that frame and everything has to come out here. And uh, there's just a good spot to set it right there next to the tire. Here you see the damage. It's here, framing in here, and across, and that, and that. But I think it's pretty well fixable. So, um, let me go grab my screw gun and we will continue taking things apart. I have a plan. And the unknown mechanic is giving me a hand with it. So we just took off the uh, frame for the fridge uh, access panel. So here's where we're at. We have all the aluminum peeled off. You can see that the 8th inch uh, mahogany door skin underneath is pretty well disintegrated. The framing here, uh, from about here in, looks to be somewhat intact. Framing from here over doesn't look horrible. And then as we get up into the area there, it looks okay. So we're going to continue taking things apart and uh, go from there. You can see that it was pulled away from the framing here. You see the gap here and down in there. And uh, so yeah, uh, what we might end up doing is taking apart here and putting plywood there. And uh, then the other thing that's going to happen is the water is going to get switched over to the other side where utilities are supposed to be. Okay, so we're going to continue pulling things apart. Remember, you only want to go three quarters of the Okay, you see the angle grinder there to cut the siding on the camper. It makes a nice straight cut. it piece by piece we just start pulling it apart I'm using a uh, chisel to get the laminate uh, the skin off of the framing there you go fiberglass insulation and it's dry totally dry There's a lot that's going to happen in this video. It, uh, this is not something that you can just watch two or three minutes and think you know what you got to do. There's a lot of steps involved and I highly recommend watching the video. Uh, you can fast forward through parts of it if you need to, but uh, there's a lot to learn, a lot of decisions and a lot of discussion going on in this. Funny when I went to uh, a uh, deteriorator. Yeah. So here's the way that uh, SNS reinforced. Here is the camper uh, tie down, and it's basically just a piece of uh, 16 inch metal. It's actually about eight inch galvanized. With uh, three. How long was that? Two inch. Inch, inch. And I don't know if it was an inch. 
and we will replace that later on maybe in the video. Inch, maybe inch and a quarter screws. There, you can use my torque finger. Uh, did you pitch that team? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So basically, that is the tie down for the S and S. See up there. I'll help, I'll hang on to the bracket. Yeah. Well, we'll need the bracket. Need to put some rust stuff on it. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, that's the bracket. Um, not an incredibly hell of a lot, is it? But you know, I'll tell you one thing, it's very probable that the bracket here kept this whole side from getting ripped out with the chain holding it in. Yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna bet that was it. But, um, okay. So, yeah, well, you know, even in the condition it's in, this bracket has taken some really hard hits and uh it didn't pull out so that's a good sign but remember there was there's this uh oh you found it too uh there's this uh three core uh one by two piece of uh, frame here half inch plywood here and then there is a two by three down there and uh it actually looks more like a one and a quarter by three or a one and a quarter by two and a half so anyway um yeah this will get replaced because it's just rotting out and i think that they just reinforced their framing joints with uh tin strips of uh metal better than nothing i guess thin lightweight and that's the that's the idea behind truck campers thin and lightweight but strong as you can make it okay so let's uh, get back to it we're peeling off the uh, edge molding now and then I'll be cutting away more of the siding there next to the uh, fridge Up there is in pretty good shape. And I got very lucky doing this repair. You see, I never took the camper off the truck. Uh, I never needed more access than what I had right there. It's probably this. It's probably from going. Well, this is. is where we're at we have torn the side of the camper apart and this here is the pre-existing edge for the fridge compartment and so we will use that as a guideline um, I've got a mark here so we got to come straight across here for the cover of the fridge um, <laughs> this cover for the um, firebox to the fridge. I'm going to lower that down because this is actually supposed to be touching the plate here to help prevent blowouts. And, and uh, blowouts on the pilot here, light. Uh, you see how my fridge is all new Dutch Air Amish rebuild and uh, it's been working great. This here is a uh, heat shield I put on. Behind that is the two inch duct that goes up in here and heats the overhead. And uh, this is also a heat shield that goes around to protect it. So uh, no, no uh, burn up pipes. It uh, was scorched from the old fridge setup. 
And so that problem is cured. So what we're going to do is we got plenty of meat here, and we're going to take advantage of it. Um, I'm, what you doing? Going to self-destruct that. Piece um, by, take it out piece by piece. Well, you know, I'm not sure we need to. What I'm thinking of doing is, okay, we can li trim this, trim that, clean it, bolt uh, a... Um, uh, no, I was uh, just going to put like a... a uh, three quarter inch, maybe two pieces of three quarter inch plywood down here, and then that will back everything. Or maybe just use a two by six or whatever. You still need another upright. Yeah, you and then we can. The well, we can put another piece of uh, three quarter inch in here, and then uh, if we have to, we can put another three quarter piece from this board up as high as it'll go here <laughs> and then we can uh, fit three quarter inch inside of there and screw it together so there's a lot of uh, stuff we can do here to uh, um, make attachments um, well what, what did not like well the thing is we're gonna have to cut a <laughs> hole in the new piece of plywood that that's going through aren't we yeah well I'm gonna get my saws all here in a second and uh, do that but uh, so anyway, that, that's kind of what we're thinking about, is uh, putting some reinforcing here, and then we can, uh, first we'll reinforce up here, from there, up with three-quarter plywood, and then uh, we'll lay some plywood in here, or a two-by-six, uh, something to reinforce it, then we can fit some more out here, um, and... Uh, uh, we can put, leave a lot of this here 2x4 down here and replace it from here over and then slip another one in that will fasten into the 3 quarter inch on the inside. <coughs> so, hey Jeff, you can slip a 2x6 way back there, probably down to here. Mm -hmm. How? There, this is, there's a, look at that. all you have to do is take this, uh, oh I guess that's exhaust. Well, you, mm -hmm. want to, you can get a 2x4 in there. Right back there. You talk about laying it flat. Yeah, a flat stove. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that one, yeah, because the two by three is right here. And you could change that to a two by four instead of a two by three. Well, yeah. But uh, two by, th it's that's worked not a, that's fine. That's not. Yeah, it is a two by three. Isn't yeah, it? It, it's worked fine as a two by three. But we got a you know section it the way I was saying, overlap and uh, make think, it strong. I think a diagonal cut will do it mm -hmm. if you're going to glue it because you already got three quarter plywood here. Yeah, but remember that's a lot of force yeah. on that tie down. This, how far does that go back? Well, it looks like it goes back a ways. Mm -hmm. So anyway, uh, we're gonna we're gonna think about this a little bit more and get on it and when we get it figured out then I will show you what the resolution is okay it's per perfecta mundo yeah, okay so here's what we're doing we have a uh, we're gonna fill that with the uh, treated uh, lumber and uh, we're making a template from cardboard so this is all going to be filled in with a block here's the uh, hole for the jack power wires so we have added three quarter inch plywood here and it goes over to the frame it touches the frame down below and then we have this uh, two by four that runs across over to about here and uh, then we're going to replace this two by three from about here over then uh, we're putting a piece of um, plywood behind this and um, that will finish out the corner here and then this gets cut back and another piece of three-quarter plywood here and that will screw everything together solidifying pretty much everything and uh, so uh, yeah this gets cut out then the plywood will come over to the front edge and up and then it'll come back to here, down, and well, actually it comes all the way up and uh, 
Okay, the piece behind goes up, and the piece over will cut around that. And uh, then, um, yeah, so we'll have this very heavily reinforced here. We'll have one, two, and then three pieces of plywood over everything. Uh, the outer layer of plywood is going to go from here down all the way up. So that's going to cover everything here. Then uh, we've got our 2 by 3 here that we're working with. We have nice solid meat there. So what we'll probably do is cut it up a little bit and then uh, uh, overlap notch them together. And um, then we're going to put a uh, aluminum plate across the front inside and that will pretty much hold the entire works together uh, and then you see the hoses for the water fill and the city water connection and those are going to get put over onto the other side <clears throat> would the you finish that sentence <laughs> Sometimes these shapes can can mess you up. Yeah, yeah, and especially right after he tells me not to use French when people are standing around here. I tell you, the double standards around this place. I mean, okay, uh, so that is the update here. Uh, more video to follow. All right, so we are coming down to the end here. The, Gorilla Glue set up nicely in here. We're going to do some more work with that. And I think I may fiberglass this area in here, but maybe not. <clears throat> so anyway, I got to take the sawzall and trim this off. And then we're going to fit a piece of quarter inch plywood over everything here. <clears throat> and that should pretty much uh, finish off the wood repair and then we will make this um, sheet of aluminum over here fit frame around all of the plastic here there is uh, framing here and here so I've got a lot of material to screw into and then also to here so that will reinforce things a bit too just from the strength of that large aluminum sheet eight inch thick okay all right so let me get back to it trim this off this up here a little bit make that work with the quarter inch and I've got a uh, sheet metal lip that needs to be bent over Okay, you did 
just want this one flush here, don't you, Jeff? What one? Right here. Why don't you draw that line while I hold it? You just want it flush, don't you? Yeah. Um, now, let me, let me make sure we get the bottom. Yeah, where bottom is pretty flush with the one by three. Okay. Yeah, that doesn't matter. This, this is good. Gorilla glue just gets in everything. Here, yes, oh, I know. How'd you lose that? Well, it's right here, this. moron. Well, <laughs> I'm not a mind reader, dude. Well, all you had to do is look. It was right here. Easier said after you found it. You ever notice how things are always in the last place you look? Well, they, they're, they usually, you usually find them right after. Running a few screws to hold it, uh, the sideboard into the uh, framing, the uh, two by sixes that we put in there. Okay, do you want to mark this? This is the two by three that is going to go on the bottom there, That's replacing weird. the piece that got torn Phew. out. Phew. It Go, goes butts right against that, don't it? Yeah. That seems to be what it wants to do. Trimming off a little bit of rot uh, from the plywood that is on the bottom there, and then I'm going to fit a piece of replacement plywood in there to fill the area and uh, glue it and screw it using um, Gorilla Glue. Using a lot of Gorilla Glue on this thing. Well, I. And remember, when you use Gorilla Glue, you don't want voids. You want it to clamp together tightly forward? and flatly. Because if there's voids, then it will foam up. And the foam is not as strong as uh, when it's uh, tightly clamped. And then no foam can form. You just get the solid bond. And then also you want to make sure that you wet one or both sides of the wood because that activates the uh, Gorilla Glue to um, do its thing. It uh, wants to pull moisture and uh, somehow it uses moisture in its uh, hardening process. So the unknown mechanic is screwing up the 2x3 underneath there now. Did I say the 2x3? Not the 2x3, the uh, plywood uh, piece that uh, is replacing the rotted section. And then the 2x3 will go up. And we uh, designed the 2x3, we uh, made it so that where it uh, the new piece meets the old piece uh, we chiseled halfway through the thickness, the wide thickness, so that there's uh, two three-quarter inch sections overlapping. Okay, so this has been a uh, easier project than uh, what we had thought. Um, so we've got a uh, 
extra 2x4 inside that goes under the fridge and the cabinets. There's a large void under there. And then we are uh, doing a uh, half notch and then uh, one, two, three, four uh, screws through that with um, some uh, Gorilla Glue. And uh, we have some Gorilla Glue is going here, uh, holding everything together. So, um, we have uh, this piece of plywood that's just in place for now. We're going to close up shop for tonight. And uh, things are looking really good. We'll have this 2x3 fixed coming across and it will rest. Yeah. In here. And so we have to clean up the plywood under that too. But uh, we'll, we'll figure it out. So anyway, um, yeah, things are looking real That's good. That's the too. overlap the there. We're going to have there. We'll have bigger screws than that. And then what else have we got going? Uh, so, yeah, it worked out really well. I didn't have to pull the fridge out or uh, any of this stuff. We just uh, had access to all the framing inside. So we took out all the rotted stuff and then we sistered in. Uh, three-quarter inch plywood everywhere so this corner is majorly stronger there's the hole for the um, plug for the jacks and uh, what else we got going okay so um, stay tuned for the next part when we wrap this up Do the finishing touches, maybe do some metal work in the corners here. The uh, section of uh, wood for the jack plug had to be chiseled out on the back side because of the way the wires come out 90 degrees from the uh, insert for the plug that goes into the wood. So I'm loading that up with Gorilla Glue. And I'm going to put Gorilla Glue Wait down on the bottom there so down. the edges are glued nicely. Nice and strong stuff. Holds everything together very well. And we're also going to need a uh, bar clamp to hold it together tightly. Because uh, when you do Gorilla Glue, you want everything to fit nice and tight. You do not want voids for foam to, uh, uh, for the glue to foam. You want to have nice tight fitting joints. And I just butterfingered that piece a little bit, let it slip. And I got glue on my fingers. Neither of us like this uh, glue on the hands because you can't get rid of it. Bottom two. It's out right there. At the bottom. Forward. screwing that piece on using uh, Duroc or Hardyback screws for cement board and the reason we're using that is because they are made for wet locations and they are a uh, coated screw that um, uh, they, uh, they're designed to be in wet locations so it's a good screw to use when you're assembling uh, the framing reinforcement on the camper framing and uh, also they have larger heads than uh, sheetrock screws or deck screws oh, so you get a little extra down. holding power on the material too yeah. so that is a hot ticket for you inch and five eighths 
uh, Duroc or Hardy Backer screws and they are also available in I believe two and a half inch lengths I'm screwing these things in about every six inches throughout the uh, material and uh, just making sure we have a nice good bond. There's a couple of pieces of framing in there that I wanted to make sure that I uh, attached to and there's the bar clamp. Okay so that's where we're at right now. We're gonna put this piece under here, which will restore the 2x3 that was under here. And we have this 2x4 that goes all the way back here. And we've got all this additional framing plywood that we put in there, so this is stronger than ever. So we're gonna pre-drill that board and then run some uh, three inch number 10 heavy deck screws into it. They're uh, a uh, coated screw so they will hold up well. Um, right now I am putting a bunch of Gorilla Glue on there and the wood uh, has been uh, wetted down. So we're just positioning that and then going to screw it together. There's a piece of shim to fill a void that was in there. <coughs> the unknown mechanic is uh, running some screws in now. And some of those screws are going into that new piece of 2x4. So it's very, very strong. It's adding to the strength of the framing up there. It's bad probably. It's flushing off. It's never That's gonna good. see daylight again. No. Um, it it oh I think one thing, I think this needs to go. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Okay, well you know what do you want? I could take a grinding disc and flatten it out down to here and just taper it up. Because it's up up here it's good. Yeah. It just needs to be tapered down. I think I have it. So there's a little bit of uneven framing on the camper and we're going to deal with it. I'm going to cut it off using the Sawzall in a minute. And that worked good for most of the length that we needed to cut. But um, the unknown mechanic had that 36 grit sanding disc. And I uh, put that on the angle grinder and sanded down the rest of it but I couldn't get the Sawzall. And it made very quick work of it. The only downside is, is that it blew wood uh, sawdust all through the <laughs> yeah, fridge compartment, so I had to get the vacuum out and clean it. So right to the bend, huh? yeah. so now we are uh, reattaching the uh, uh, camper tie down. You can have it between that board. Um, yeah. And the okay. new. Uh, tie down is going to be much tougher than the old one. How are you going to cut it? Chisel. So I need to chisel an eighth of an inch of uh, material away so that the tie down will sit flush to the surface of the plywood that it's uh, going to be set into. Then also I need to take a drill and drill a slot for the uh, bent over tab at the top that sticks into the wood about uh, three eighths of an inch. But these will definitely work for that. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just kind of working my way along there. I have it drawn out the size and 
uh, position of the camper tie down and so I'll just keep doing that uh, now what I'm doing is I'm going to drill holes in the top there uh, and then eventually I'm, I'm using the drill like a router and uh, trying to create the slot for that top edge of the camper tie down to fit in there Then we're going to be using some uh, quarter inch bolts, uh, uh, wide flathead top, uh, almost like carriage bolts to secure it, the tie down to the framing of the camper. So we'll have three of those uh, carriage type bolts and then a couple of uh, three inch uh, deck screws coming down the top. And uh, there you see it there. How's then that? we have this, uh, that's why I use this. Uh, steel. Uh, that's why I use the rattle gun. I told you. Uh, strap that is going to increase the strength of the 2x3 mm -hmm. and also surprise it uh, bends a hard 90 degrees up in the corner. Okay, where so the jack has made this uh, 32 inch bracket that it. goes 16 inches under. It uh, is under the tie down. And okay. okay, so yeah, we are using two and a quarter, or how much are those? Two and a half inch? Yeah. Those are two and a half inch. What do they look like? Yeah. Two and a half inch by five sixteenths <coughs> stainless steel lag bolts. Like the one you want to use? Not to countersink? I'd use this mm -hmm. one. So I am going to drill some uh, uh, re relieved um, chamfered holes for the deck screws that we're going to screw into the uh, strap and hold it into the framing. And uh, after that, that the next step will be there, to huh? fit the aluminum plate, uh, the sheet aluminum, and uh, you're going to see that in a second at eight times speed. And I will do my best to explain what is happening so that you can do it too if you want. Okay, so this is inside. And you can see the new framing all through up there. Got to put the wires back out. And uh, yeah, things are looking good. Those are the wires for the jack laying there. All that new plywood in there. And then let's see how far back. 2 by 4 goes. It goes all the way back under the heater. Okay. So, cool. Warm biz. Alright, so what we're doing here is we have this sheet of aluminum and I drew a uh, line on the skin of the camper where I wanted it to be. And uh, then what we did is we're holding the sheet of aluminum up to the lines around the opening and then marking where the opening for the fridge uh, access cover is. And so you do that on both sides, the top and the bottom, and then you draw a straight line between them and that gives you uh, the exact position of your opening and uh, so what I did is I took a drill and I drilled half inch holes 
at each of the corner points inside of the corner and then the unknown mechanic is using his four inch grinder with a cutting wheel and he is following the lines and cutting out the aluminum and then uh, the cutout we're going to use that for the front of the uh, truck camper jack so right now he is just relieving the uh, burrs off of that and he's given a test fit there. Look good, pretty damn close. Looks like your thing will fit. Okay, mm -hmm. okay so it fit well and then what we did is we held it up there and drew out the curve where it's going to uh, uh, follow up the front edge of the camper and the curve onto the uh, cab over and you'll see that in a minute what I'm doing now is I am uh, drawing lines for where I want a row of screws to hold this thing down or to the truck camper and then I'm measuring it out and uh, plotting screw hole locations making everything nice straight and equal distance so this will look very nice and clean when it's all mounted up to the truck camper and, uh, so then I'm gonna once I've got all the holes uh, positioned then I'll grab the drill and just start drilling and drilling until uh, I have all the holes drilled and I do actually have to uh, do some more drilling and add a few more holes to it uh, we ran out of screws and so I limited the number of holes I drilled and then also we're going to load up the back of that with some of this uh, adhesive uh, caulk that we're using uh, it's a uh, construction polyurethane caulk uh, PL brand. I, I think it's made by um, uh, Loctite and uh, it remains permanently slightly flexible and it's uh, tough and sticky stuff. And so there I am drilling and drilling and drilling. And then in a minute, um, I'm going to go to the back of the truck camper and load this thing up with adhesive caulk. You have the right bit ready. And you can see the right, cross right? of the caulk on the oh, oh. No, these are square. panel. Uh, they're Phillips. Oh yeah, they are. up here you're good I don't think it moved okay so now we have that aluminum plate positioned and not all of those are very I've good. got uh, inch and a quarter stainless steel screws number tens and uh, I'm just going to start screwing the panel on. Hold that uh, jack up to that, that mount bracket. Let's see what it does. And I will uh, be 
redoing some of these screws because I think I'd like to have like a inch and a half or inch and three quarter screws in some of the locations. Yeah, don't put any screws from here. I saw that. Yeah. And a step ladder to get those uh, extra high places. Yeah, I'm sorry I didn't uh, position the camera better. Uh, you get on a roll and you, you're working and doing things instead of thinking about the camera. Are you gonna put any, you gonna put any in the middle? What screws? Uh, not right now. Not enough screws. Hmm. Good, not a pie. Yeah, that's going to clean pretty good. Yeah. Doesn't look horrible at all. We have been working on it uh, since about noon today. It's uh, nine o'clock now, but we have our. Repair is almost done. Here is an aluminum patch, and this is an old sign, and it's about eighth inch thick aluminum, and it is very, very solid, tough, weather-resisting aluminum. And so I made it go around the frame of the fridge back here. We have that. We've got the jack bracket is back on. I have more aluminum framing in front here. There's the hole for the uh, plug to the jack. And uh, so I guess tomorrow um, I could finish tonight, but why bother? Um, tomorrow we'll finish uh, putting all the weather stripping back in and uh, wrap everything up. So anyway, it's looking really good. Dave has been uh, no, working as the unknown mechanic has been working his butt off and uh, and it's only cost me one bacon cheeseburger and fries with a cup of coffee. Of course uh, and an air conditioner and an air conditioner yeah yeah fair trade. <laughs> Actually <sighs> air conditioner first. Yes. So anyway, that looks pretty darn good. I am very, very happy with that repair. It is uh, stronger than it used to be. It is very, very weather sealed. And uh, so hopefully this will never give me another problem. See, the jack is nice and straight. Your, stashing his stuff in your drill box. Yeah, I don't, I, neatness doesn't count tonight. So, there is the 2 inch, 8 inch steel strap that we made. It uh, comes down 16 inches on the bottom. It's got a bolt on this side of the bracket and a bolt on that side of the tie down bracket. And then it comes up oh, 16 inches over on the other side so what's nice about that is we have the bolts for the jack mount bracket go through the steel brace and you see how it's in the corner there and now when you jack the camper up there is solid metal supporting the bottom something that uh, truck camper manufacturers should have put in a long time ago. Okay, so that is your update and uh, we'll have the complete how-to video whenever I feel like editing it. I'm not feeling like editing right now. I've done an awful lot of stuff. Okay, one last look at the front edge. See, we have that aluminum plate covering the front corner here too so everything is way 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 stronger now okay all right 
Stay tuned for more exciting truck camper, camping, traveling excitement. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Did the lacquer thinner cut this stuff? Uh, it does, but paint thinner is better. No, huh? Paint thinner is better. Okay, so I have the trim piece all gooped up. I uh, had to use some self-leveling caulk, which was a little bit of a mess, but we got it. Dicor. Then we'll uh, fasten it all back together, and it'll hold up really well. Looks like it's yeah. It looks like it's. See the aluminum plate on the front there. So you want to go ahead and screw this thing up with those deck screws? Yeah. Uh, the no the um, Duroc. Duroc. Getting ready, I just gotta find the bit. I've got it here in my pocket. Where do you want the first one? Up there. Second one. That first hole takes in the bronze. Nothing. Good though. Yeah. That one's pretty good. Okay. Are we having fun yet? I gotta put wipe off. Here's a homie's not having fun. Mm -hmm. I hate this kind of work. Hey, what? I hate this kind of work. Mm -hmm. You know, sealing things with caulk and trying to put screws in at the same time. the way you put it on. Well, this is that uh, self-leveling shit. Oh. I think I'm going to run out of new hole or old holes here. I did. Well, this, this might penetrate aluminum. I don't know. The wacked one. There's no hole at the bottom, so what, what, you want to do a little body work down there and before I pound it in, or before I do it, because it looks looks like it's it looks like it needs it. Or I could just put, go ahead and put the screw in. Why don't I just try it and see what it does? I've never had one down here, so but it sure looks like it needs one. Mm 
Pewter's all. Pewter's all. Do you got any thinner? Paint thinner? Yeah. Yeah. Is that it works. It's a little easier on you than on your hands. Yeah. And it works better with that. I don't know. I'm gonna go get some. This ready to go in? What? Uh, yeah. How hard is it to get in? Uh, oh, not hard. Okay, people, we are done. We have finished this project. So there is um, an old heavy gauge aluminum sign, and we cut that section of it there to fit on the front edge of the camper, covering up some problems there. And then we took another section of the sign and we put it in the front right corner here and it ties all the framing together there is framing here 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 and going across so all of that framing is tied together with this heavy gauge of aluminum and it is really a tough aluminum uh, so anyway uh, that worked out beautifully then you see we have our steel strap under here and this strap comes up here and has bolts going through it and what that does is when we jack up the front of the camper the um, steel strap here is now a solid support on the bottom of the camper um, before it was just this and that side of the jack bracket supporting the camper and now with the steel strap we have it supporting the front of the weight of the camper and there are one two three four uh, stainless steel bolts going up through this two by three into a two by four that is inside of there also uh, then we put in the uh, camper tie down is uh we've got some stainless steel bolts holding that or actually they're not stainless steel but they're a uh, a uh, weather resistant um, large headed bolt so anyway that's got that we have the wiring done and then uh, we did have to make kind of a makeshift thing here we have a drill bit there's an aluminum shaft that goes in here holds the bracket to the uh, or the leg for the awning to the side of the camper and that aluminum bracket broke so we used a 3 16 inch drill bit and uh, I'll use that until it uh, I can get a replacement uh, part for this if I can but otherwise that repair should work for the duration so I'm not going to worry about it too much Okay, um, so I guess that's it. The truck camper is now made whole again. I am just thrilled. 
there's other projects that have to happen with it too but uh this was the main one and uh we were victorious okay that concludes the truck camper uh front right jack tear out repair project i hope you enjoyed the project learned something for it and definitely do click like and subscribe to the channel if you want to learn more truck camper maintenance camping building construction cooking all kinds of good stuff going on here and you are welcome to join in all right thanks for watching see you on the next video